All right. Hey everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking about ethics. I'm giving a little bit of an overview of the chapter one ethics section, but I really want to stress that I'm not talking about a lot of what they're talking about in here. There's some overlap. We both talk about uh, Immanuel Kant's categorical imperative. We both have discussions about that, but there's information I will cover in here that the book does not cover, and there's information that the book covers that I do not cover. So I would highly recommend you go through that ethics guide, you look through the questions that they present, and you try to answer them for yourself. Ethics is a part of philosophy, and it is specifically talking about morality. How do we know what is right and how do we know what is wrong? How can any human know what is the right thing to do? How can any human know what the wrong thing is to do? So ethics, specifically ethics, when someone has ethics, that is a set of moral principles that help determine right and wrong. Ethics as a subject is part of philosophy. It is trying to determine what that set of moral principles should be. And all throughout history, you have different ethicists proposing a different set of moral principles. And then other ethicists will say, well, no, you're wrong and also full of it. Here's what it should actually be. And no one really ever seems to agree on a perfect set of moral principles. There are some ethicists that have risen to some amount of fame because a lot of people kind of either agree with them or modify their work to some extent. Um, there are just a lot of ethicists out there. There's a lot of different ideas out there and no one has yet come up with something that is 100% right. Now, ethics at, at the core is about creating a set of what we consider to be universal truths and then applying certain rules of logic to those universal truths so that we can get more and more and more information about determining right and wrong to the point where we can use these different things as tests to say, well, is a certain action right or is a certain action wrong? One of these ethicists is Immanuel Kant. He lived in Prussia, uh, formerly the Kingdom of Prussia, and then it became East Prussia. He was specifically in the city of Konigsberg. Uh, he lived from 17, 1724 to 1804, and he made the categorical imperative. This was his idea of an ethical system that he saw as being, um, you know, the a good test of determining what is right and what is wrong. Now, before I get into it, I want to state that this is a opinion from a person who lived a certain life, who had certain life experiences that would be wildly different from the life experiences of many, many, many other people. So the textbook, in, to some extent, seems to present the categorical categorical imperative as fact. The categorical, the categorical imperative is one way of analyzing an action and trying to determine if it is ethical or not, whether it is something that you should do or something that you shouldn't do. And it has its flaws, it has counterexamples, but even then the flaws and counterexamples are very subjective. I might give a counterexample to the categorical imperative, and then someone else might say, well, I don't think that is a valid counterexample, because all of this type of stuff is very subjective when it comes down to it. Regardless, the categorical imperative states that one should behave only in a way that one would want the behavior to be a universal law. So the idea is that if you are about to do something, you should ask yourself, well, hey, um, do I think it is okay for everyone to be able to do that? 
And if, or even, you know, do I think that everyone should do this? And if you answer yes to this, then you should take that action. Or you might even have to take that action, depending on the severity of this type of action. Now, the textbook presents stealing as something that you can use the categorical imperative to be like, okay, well, I shouldn't steal. The way they put it is that if you are about to steal something, you should ask yourself, well, do I think that everyone should be able to steal anything that they want? And they, the textbook posits that, well, this would sort of abolish the idea of private property. You can't possibly own anything because it can be stolen at any moment. And then it's not yours anymore and no one can really do anything about that. So because that's not a world that you would want to live in, you shouldn't take that action. Now, something to think about with this is, um, you know, maybe there's a person who is starving. They have no money. They are perhaps days away from perishing of starvation. Or even worse, maybe there's someone who has no money and their child is days away from dying of starvation. The categorical imperative would say, well, no, that person shouldn't steal even if it's to save someone's life because then that would allow everyone to steal anything. So that would allow some billionaire to start stealing laptops by the truck full, even though they don't need those laptops. The categorical imperative kind of puts those two actions as the same. So that is the idea of the categorical imperative that is, you know, whether or not you think that example is valid or not, whether that person who is trying to feed a serving child shouldn't steal because stealing is wrong, whether you agree with the categorical imperative here or not, that is one way of looking at a situation where things might get a little tricky with the categorical imperative. Another way of presenting this is that if you take an action and you would not be willing to admit to it, it is not ethical under the categorical imperative. If you're trying to be, if you're doing something that you would be ashamed of everyone knowing, then under the categorical imperative, that would be something that you shouldn't do. Now, because the categorical imperative is meant to determine things that are good to do and things that are bad to do, Kant then came up with a definition of duty, which is the necessity to act in accordance with the categorical imperative. If the categorical imperative says that something is a good action to take, then it is a duty to actually take that action. A perfect duty is a behavior that must always be met. So the textbook gives an example of not lying as a perfect duty because in their eyes they are saying that you should never lie. In fact, under the categorical imperative, it should be universal law that nobody should lie. So because of that, because that must always be the case, this would be classified as a perfect duty. Now, in the discussion board, I actually introduce a question that asks about whether or not there is such a thing as justified lying and whether that justified lying actually you know, works with the categorical imperative or not. So I'll leave that up as an exercise to you. The, the textbook's example of a perfect duty is not lying because they are saying that there should never be a case in which you should lie. Now, in contrast to a perfect duty is the imperfect duty, which is behavior that is good but doesn't always have to be met. Giving to charity would be an example of an imperfect duty because it is good to give to charity, but it's not something that you always should be doing all the time. Namely, you know, maybe it's a good idea to work to make money so that you can give to charity in the future, because you're not constantly 
giving to charity at all times. That's what classifies it as an imperfect duty. All right, well, that is just the very quick ethics primer here. That is, um, you know, talking a little bit about the categorical imperative. Uh, and what I've tried to do in this video is to give you a little bit of food for thought. I really want to emphasize that the categorical imperative is not a universal truth, but rather a statement made by a person and people are not perfect, so no statement that a person can make can really be perfect. So I want you to keep that in mind as we go through the ethics guide in this textbook, because I don't think the textbook really does a good idea, a good job of like actually expressing that, expressing the fact that this is to some extent very subjective. But regardless, that's ethics. So thank you all very much for watching.